the casting of the 1964 movie, referred to here as the show, was a meticulous process. For the lead role, the producers wanted an accomplished actor who could convincingly portray a war hero. After several auditions, Cliff Robertson was chosen due to his solid performance and charisma. In the search for the female lead, the filmmakers were looking for an actress who could bring both strength and vulnerability to her character. After a series of chemistry tests, Maria Pershy was cast opposite Robertson. Her elegant screen presence and compatibility with Robertson sealed the deal. For the supporting roles, the producers sought out experienced character actors. George Chakaris, known for his work in West Side Story, was cast as a German officer, bringing a sense of menace to the role. Harry Andrews, a British stage and screen veteran, was chosen for his authoritative presence, perfect for his role as a high-ranking officer. One pivotal moment in the casting process was the decision to cast a real-life pilot, Donald Houston, as the squadron's flight lieutenant. His authenticity added a layer of credibility to the aerial scenes. The casting of the show was a delicate balance of finding the right blend of star power, authenticity, and chemistry. Each actor was chosen for their ability to contribute to this balance, making the show a compelling watch. The director of the 1964 movie, known for its gripping aerial combat scenes, was the talented Welsh filmmaker, Walter Grauman. With a background in television, Grauman brought a unique visual style to the film. He emphasized dynamic camera movements and innovative editing techniques to create a sense of intensity and urgency. Grauman's approach was influenced by his early career in live television, where he honed his skills in directing fast-paced, action-packed stories. He was known for his meticulous attention to detail and his ability to work seamlessly with large cast and crews. Collaboration was key to Grauman's success. He worked closely with the film cinematographer, Erwin Hillier, to create a distinctive visual look for the movie. Together, they used a variety of camera angles and lenses to capture the thrilling aerial combat sequences. Grauman also worked closely with the cast, including Cliff Robertson and George Chakiris, to help them deliver nuanced and compelling performances. Grauman's directorial vision was also informed by his interest in history. He was fascinated by the true story that inspired the movie, and he worked closely with the film's historical advisors to ensure that the story was told with accuracy and authenticity. In addition to his technical skills and historical knowledge, Brahman brought a deep emotional sensitivity to the film. He was committed to telling a story that was not only exciting and action-packed, but also deeply moving and emotionally resonant. Through his careful direction, and attention to detail, Grauman created a film that has stood the test of time and continues to captivate audiences today. The 1964 movie, 633 Squadron, is a thrilling watch with many surprising facts to follow. One scene that has stuck with me is the daring bombing mission, highlighting the bravery of the characters. Among the talented cast, Cliff Robertson delivers a memorable performance as Wing Commander Roy Grant. Did you know that this film is based on a novel inspired by real-world War II events? Keep watching to uncover more fascinating details. We'd love to hear about your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. As for my favorite scene, it's difficult to choose, as the movie is filled with intense action and emotional moments. The camaraderie among the squadron members is especially noteworthy, making the stakes feel even higher. Cliff Robertson's portrayal of Wing Commander Roy Grant is exceptional. His charisma and leadership skills shine through, making him a standout character in the film. The relationships he builds with the other characters add depth to the story and make it even more engaging. So, stay tuned for more fun facts about 633 Squadron. You won't want to miss the wild ride and heartwarming moments that make this movie a classic. Don't forget to share your memories and thoughts in the comments below. The 1964 movie, often referred to as 633 Squadron, was shot primarily in England. The set design was a critical aspect of the production. The film's central location, an airfield, was meticulously crafted at Pinewood Studios. Realistic hangars, runways, and aircraft were created to provide an authentic backdrop for the story. The production team faced logistical challenges in sourcing and managing the film's primary prop, the German Heinkel E-111 bomber. Due to their rarity, only a few were available worldwide. 
the film's tight budget and schedule added to the complexity. To overcome this, the production team purchased a Heinkel from Spain, dismantled it, and shipped it to England for reassembly. In terms of innovative techniques, the film employed the use of miniatures and model work for air combat sequences. These models, when combined with clever editing and visual effects, created the illusion of large-scale aerial battles. This approach was both cost-effective and safe, as it avoided the need for dangerous flying stunts. As for location, apart from the studio-built airfield, several exterior scenes were filmed in Norfolk, England. The region's flat, open landscapes perfectly mirrored the film's wartime setting. However, filming in these areas presented its own set of challenges, including unpredictable weather and limited access to modern amenities. Despite these hurdles, the crew managed to complete the film on schedule, thanks to careful planning and execution. The final product is a testament to the dedication and hard work of everyone involved in the production. The film, set in 1943, takes audiences on a thrilling journey as a group of British airmen embark on a dangerous mission. The main character, Roy Grant, is a skilled pilot and leader who is tasked with leading the squadron on a perilous operation. Grant's background as a seasoned pilot and his unwavering determination make him the perfect fit for this challenging role. The movie's supporting cast is equally impressive, featuring a diverse group of characters with unique backgrounds and motivations. Among them is Eric Bergman, a Norwegian operative who plays a crucial role in the success of the mission. Bergman's expertise in navigating the treacherous Norwegian terrain is invaluable to the squadron. The film's action-packed scenes, including intense air battles and daring escapes, keep viewers on the edge of their seats. The attention to detail in recreating the historical context of the time is commendable, with realistic sets and costumes transporting audiences to the midst of World War II. The film's director, Walter Grauman, skillfully balances the high-stakes action with moments of character development and emotional depth. The result is a gripping and engaging story that resonates with audiences long after the credits roll. Overall, the movie is a thrilling and entertaining portrayal of courage, determination, and teamwork in the face of adversity. Its talented cast, attention to historical detail, and engaging storyline make it a must-watch for fans of war movies and action-adventure films alike. The music in the 1964 film, 633 Squadron, plays a crucial role in setting the narrative's tense and thrilling tone. Composed by Eric Coates, the score is a masterclass in how music can elevate a film's emotional impact. Coates was a seasoned composer by the time he worked on 633 Squadron. He had already made a name for himself with his distinctive style, which blended classical and contemporary elements. For this film, he created a score that complements the action sequences and underlines the emotional depth of the characters. The main theme, the Dam Busters March, is a rousing, patriotic tune that becomes the heartbeat of the movie. It plays during the opening credits, setting the stage for what's to come. The march is bold. Brassy sound mirrors the courage and determination of the film's protagonists. In contrast, Coates uses softer, more introspective music to highlight the characters' emotional journeys. For instance, the love theme, played during romantic scenes, is a gentle, melodic piece that conveys the tender feelings between the characters. The score also enhances the film's dramatic moments. The music swells during tense scenes, heightening the suspense and keeping the audience on the edge of their seats. When tragedy strikes, the music takes on a mournful tone, reflecting the character's grief. The soundtrack, featuring songs from the era, further enriches the film's atmosphere. These songs, played during lighter moments, provide a contrast to the score's more serious tone, creating a balanced emotional landscape. In creating the music for 633 Squadron, Coates and the musicians involved manage to craft a score that not only complements the narrative, but also stands on its own as a piece of musical art. Their work is a testament to the power of music and storytelling, leaving a lasting impact on the film and its audience. In 1959, plans for the movie were already underway, with John Sturgis set to direct, and Jack Lord, Peter Lawford, and William Holden considered for the lead roles. However, the final cast and crew were different. The film features a notable aircraft, the Mosquito, with one of them on display at the RAF Museum in Cosford, Shropshire, UK. 
Early in the movie, a Miles Messenger, a liaison, an observation aircraft that first flew in 1942, is used in an escape scene in Norway. These details provide a glimpse into the making of the movie and the historical accuracy of the aircraft depicted. One of the most iconic scenes in the movie takes place in the air as the squadron embarks on their daring mission. The camera work is exceptional, with sweeping shots of the planes flying in formation and close-ups of the pilots' faces, filled with determination and tension. The director, Walter Grohman, reportedly spent weeks working with the Royal Air Force to ensure the aerial scenes were as authentic as possible. The result is a thrilling, visceral experience that leaves audiences on the edge of their seats. The performances in this scene are also noteworthy. The lead actor, Cliff Robertson, delivers a powerful performance as the squadron leader, conveying both the strategic thinking required for the mission and the personal toll it takes on him. The supporting cast, including George Chakaris and Maria Pershi, also shine in their roles, adding depth and complexity to the story. Another iconic scene occurs in the aftermath of the mission, as the survivors gather to mourn their fallen comrades. The cinematography is stark and poignant, with the camera focusing on the faces of the grieving pilots. The performances here are equally powerful, with Robertson delivering a heart-wrenching eulogy that encapsulates the sacrifice and bravery of the squadron. The impact of these scenes on the audience is profound. The movie's portrayal of courage, sacrifice, and camaraderie in the face of adversity has resonated with viewers for generations. The film's director, actors, and cinematographers have all spoken about the importance of authenticity and attention to detail in creating these iconic moments. As Grauman noted in an interview, every detail, every prop, every costume, every line of dialogue had to be just right. That's what makes these scenes so memorable. Initially, the choice to cast Cliff Robertson, who was middle-aged at the time, as a young pilot raised eyebrows among viewers and critics alike. Despite this, his performance contributed to the film's dramatic tension and character development. The movie also marked the first appearance of Wendy Hall, introducing a fresh face to the silver screen. Notably, the film featured the distinctive three-barreled anti-aircraft Nordenfeldt gun, a triple-mounted MG-15-120 drilling flak weapon. This piece of weaponry was not only a key element in the movie's action sequences, but also a historically accurate representation of the armament adopted by the Yugoslavian Air Force for its versatility and effective anti-aircraft capabilities. The 1964 movie, known as 633 Squadron, had a significant cultural and social impact. Audiences were captivated by the thrilling story of the British squadron tasked with a daring bombing mission. The film's tense action sequences and emotional depth resonated with moviegoers, making it a box office success. In the realm of pop culture, the movie left an indelible mark. Its iconic theme song, 633 Squadron, became a hit single in the UK, and the film's exciting aerial combat scenes inspired a generation of young people to develop an interest in aviation. The movie also contributed to the popularization of war films in the 1960s, with its realistic portrayal of military life and the human drama that unfolds within it. Moreover, the film sparked discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. It explored the moral complexities of war as characters grappled with the weight of their mission and the potential loss of innocent lives. The movie also showcased the importance of camaraderie and teamwork as the squadron worked together to achieve their goal. In the world of fashion, the movie influenced men's style with its portrayal of rugged pilots in leather jackets and bomber hats becoming a popular trend. The film's depiction of the Royal Air Force also contributed to a renewed appreciation for the heroism and sacrifices of the men and women who served in the military. Overall, 633 Squadron had a profound impact on audiences, influencing pop culture and contributing to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. Its enduring legacy continues to captivate and inspire new generations of viewers. The aircraft used in the movie were specific models like RS-715, TJ-118, TV-959, TW-117, RS-709, RS-712, TA-639, and TA-719. A risky flying maneuver depicted wouldn't be typical in reality due to the need for controllability tests. Additionally, a B-25 bomber was featured as a courier plane in the film. The 1964 movie, known as 633 Squadron, received mixed reviews from critics. 
The New York Times praised the film for its first-rate aerial photography and considerable excitement. On the other hand, Variety magazine criticized the film's script and acting, stating that the characters are never fully developed and the dialogue is often trite. Despite the mixed reviews, the audience reactions were generally positive. The film was a box office success, and many viewers praised the thrilling aerial combat sequences. The movie has since become a cult classic among aviation enthusiasts. The film received one award nomination for the best sound at the 1965 BAFTA Awards. While it did not win, the nomination recognition was still a significant achievement for the film's sound team. The accolades received by the movie, including the positive audience reactions and the BAFTA nomination, are a testament to the hard work and dedication of everyone involved in the production. The film's success helped to establish the careers of many of its cast and crew members, including actor Cliff Robertson and director Walter Groman. Moreover, the movie's enduring popularity among aviation enthusiasts is a testament to its thrilling aerial combat sequences and realistic portrayal of military aviation. The film's legacy continues to inspire and entertain audiences to this day. In the final scenes of the movie, the attack on the fjord was primarily carried out using 148-scale mosquito models. While four of the de Havilland mosquitoes seen in the film were airworthy, only three could taxi on the ground. To create the illusion of a crash in Norway, the same footage of a crash at Abingdon Airfield in the UK was used, but shot from a different angle and enhanced with matte painting. The mountains of Scotland were also used to represent Norway. At high altitude, the contrails visible in the background were a common occurrence for piston engine airplanes of the era. On sunny days, entire squadrons could produce contrails that would nearly obscure the sky. This visual effect added to the authenticity of the movie's aerial scenes. During the filming of the 1964 war drama, a young and relatively unknown Cliff Robertson was chosen to play the lead role. Known for his meticulous preparation, Robertson insisted on performing many of the dangerous aerial stunts himself, much to the dismay of the insurance company. His dedication, however, earned him the respect of both the cast and crew. The film's budget was relatively modest, which meant that the production team had to be creative in order to achieve the desired visual effects. To create the illusion of a large fleet of aircraft, they employed a technique known as the cheat shot. This involved positioning model planes in the foreground and filming them against a backdrop of real planes flying in the distance. The result was a convincing and visually striking representation of a massive air attack. One of the most memorable scenes in the movie features a dramatic dogfight between a German fighter plane and one of the film's main characters, played by George Chakaris. In reality, Chakaris had never flown a plane before, let alone engaged in an aerial battle. To capture the scene, the filmmakers used a specially designed rig that allowed them to film Chakaris in a mock-up cockpit, while the real plane, with a stunt pilot at the controls, performed the daring maneuvers around him. Despite the many challenges faced during the production of the film, the cast and crew remained dedicated to bringing the story to life. The film's director, Walter Grauman, was known for his unwavering commitment to authenticity, often going to great lengths to ensure that even the smallest details were historically accurate. This dedication to realism, combined with the film's thrilling aerial sequences and strong performances, helped to make the 1964 movie a critical and commercial success. In the film, all shots of the air bases feature bright red fire tenders. However, in reality, all vehicles would have been painted in camouflage colors or green during that time. It's a common mistake, but it's worth noting that piston aircraft engines, not just jet engines, can also leave contrails in the sky. In fact, bomber formations often left behind huge miles-long contrails. Cliff Robertson, the lead actor, was so impressed with the mosquito airplane used in the movie that he wanted to buy one after filming. Unfortunately, he was not allowed to, but his love for aviation did not end there. He later bought a Spitfire MK Roman 9, which he owned until the late 1990s. It's clear that the movie and its aircraft left a lasting impression on him. The 1964 movie, known as 633 Squadron, holds a significant place in film history. As a war film, it showcased impressive aerial combat scenes, which were innovative for its time. The movie's visual effects, such as the dogfights and bombing runs, were achieved through a combination of model work, real aircraft, and in-camera effects. 
This approach influenced future filmmaking, particularly in the genre of war films. The film's director, Walter Grauman, employed a unique narrative style, interweaving multiple storyline and characters. This technique was not common in war films of the era and has since been adopted in many subsequent films. The movie's portrayal of the human side of war, focusing on the character's personal struggles and sacrifices, added depth and emotional resonance. 633 Squadron also had a notable impact on the aviation film genre. It inspired a generation of filmmakers to create more realistic and engaging aerial combat sequences. The movie's influence can be seen in later films such as Battle of Britain, Memphis Bell, and Pearl Harbor. These films all feature similar aerial combat scenes, reflecting the influence of 633 Squadron. Furthermore, the movie sparked interest in the real-life events that inspired it. The story is based on the exploits of the Royal Air Force's NUF. 633 Squadron during World War II. The film's release led to renewed public interest in the squadron and the war, resulting in several books and documentaries about the subject. In summary, 633 Squadron has left a lasting legacy in film history. Its innovative visual effects, unique narrative style, and impact on the aviation film genre have all contributed to its enduring influence. The movie's portrayal of the human side of war and its role in renewing public interest in historical events further add to its significance. In the 1964 film, the prologue reveals that the story is inspired by the actual exploits of the Royal Air Force and Commonwealth Mosquito Air Crews during World War II. The world premiere of this movie was held at the Leicester Square Theatre, London on June 4, 1964, where it raised funds for several war veteran associations. Interestingly, one of the film's stars, Donald Houston, had served in the RAF himself during the Second World War. His real-life experience may have lent authenticity to his portrayal in the movie. Upon its release, the movie faced criticism for its wooden acting and predictable plot, with George Chakaris, a Mirish Pictures contract star, being singled out for his miscast role. However, the film did have some notable aspects. The director, Walter Grauman, brought his personal experience as a bomber pilot during World War II to the project. This authentic touch was evident in the film's portrayal of aerial combat. Interestingly, the German fighters seen in the movie were not actual Mi-109 fighters, but rather four-seat Messerschmitt 108 Tefuns that had been painted to resemble Mi-109s. This creative decision was likely made due to budget constraints or the unavailability of actual Mi-109s. Despite this, the film's aerial sequences were still thrilling and well executed, thanks in part to Grauman's expertise. In an effort to take advantage of tax breaks, producer Walter Mirisch filmed the movie in the UK. Known as the Edie Plan, this strategy paid off as the entire cost of the film was recouped at the British box office. Following this success, Mirisch established Oakmount Productions, which produced a series of medium-budget World War II films featuring an American star in the lead role. The Norwegian underground receives a crucial message in Morse code indicating that M-Day has been moved up to 06 degrees in hours. The message, however, only reads a mech with no sign-off. Despite the brevity of the message, its significance is not lost on the recipients. When it came to filming the aerial scenes, three of the airworthy mosquitoes used were TK-35 models, which were modified to resemble FBMKVI versions. This was achieved by painting over the clear Perspex nose cone and side windows and fitting dummy machine gun barrels. The fourth airworthy mosquito was a T3 model with a solid nose, which only required the fitting of dummy gun barrels. These modifications allowed for a more authentic representation of the fighter-bomber versions used during the war. In the movie, the long, straight, and screen-sided valley where the mosquitoes frequently fly is the Larry GHRU, located in the Cairngorm Mountains of Scotland. The valley's unique and dramatic landscape provides a striking backdrop for the aerial scenes enhancing the film's overall visual appeal. The Larry GHRU's rugged and unforgiving terrain is a testament to the challenges faced by the characters in the movie as they navigate through the harsh conditions of the Scottish Highlands. In the film, a tragic accident occurred during the making of a dramatic air raid scene. Stunt pilot Johnny Seckers was killed when his Mosquito aircraft crashed into the sea. The production had to shut down for several days as the cast and crew mourned his loss. This shocking event is a sad reminder of the risks and dangers involved in filmmaking, particularly in action and war movies. 
The movie ultimately paid tribute to the real-life 633 Squadron and their heroic efforts during World War II, but the sadness of Secker's passing remains a part of its history. Did you know that the 1964 movie, 633 Squadron, left a significant impact on many viewers? We'd love to hear your experiences and memories related to this film. Perhaps you were captivated by the thrilling aerial combat scenes, or maybe the story's emotional depth resonated with you. Whatever your connection to the movie, we'd love to hear about it. Did this film inspire you to explore the genre of war movies further? Or perhaps it introduced you to a newfound appreciation for aviation and the heroes who risked their lives for our freedom. By sharing your stories, you can help create a vibrant community of film enthusiasts eager to explore the impact of cinema on our lives. So, don't be shy, we'd love to hear from you. To engage with fellow movie lovers, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Together, we can celebrate the enduring power of film and the memories it creates.